Hello, welcome to episode 164 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 13th of May. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you, or two weeks because I had last week off. Um, and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last two weeks. <laughs> So today I have some knitting, some crochet, some sewing in the form of dressmaking. Uh, quite a few questions from the Ask Me Anything thread and that's it for today. You can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where I sell my hand dyed yarn, project bags, stitch markers, knitting needles, crochet hooks and bag making supplies. So we've got two make-alongs going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram at the moment. That's the Craft 20 a day where we're working a little bit on a project each day and keeping our progress updated on either Instagram or Ravelry as well. And then there's the Spring Shawl Along 2021 going on both in the Ravelry group and on Instagram as well. And that runs till the end of June and the Craft 20 a day goes right till the end of the year. So you have plenty of time to join in with both of those. So let's get on with the knitting shall we? I, first of all I've got a finished pair of socks to show you. These are my watermelon socks and this is a Regia cotton yarn that I got as a gift by my lovely friend Alison and I'll come a bit closer to the camera so you can see that lovely sort of watermelon um, colour effect. I literally just made it with this length of sock I probably should have kept my shortest slightly shorter to make sure that I had plenty of yarn but I literally had just enough yarn to finish these socks so this Regia cotton yarn is a mixture of cotton and polyamide and it actually makes a not really nice sort of really smooth fabric so normally with cotton I find that things sort of stretch out quite a lot but because that it's got that bit of polyamide in it and it's quite a stretchy yarn rather than one that just stretches out and stays sort of loose um, they really work well for socks I have actually worn them once just to sort of test them out and they seem like they act very similarly to superwash merino and nylon sort of socks in that they they do sort of give a little bit when you wear them but not too much and the, but they do feel slightly sort of silkier on the foot because it's cotton rather than wool. I will have to wear them quite a bit more before I give you a proper review but that's a bit of an idea of what I think of the yarn so far. But I finished those. So this is my simple top down sock pattern which is available on my website for free and also on Ravelry as well. Uh, I've just basically done a shorter version of the rib, um, just a tiny bit of the leg and then I've gone straight in to the heel flap and gusset and then the decreases and the toe and I've kept it to my normal sort of length of foot. It's just a little bit shorter than normal. So those are finished and ready to wear, or even though I have worn them once and then I've blocked them to show you. But I have another pair of socks to show you and these have been knitted by Adam and they've taken him four years to knit. <laughs> Bless him. I think he's done really well though to be honest. So again he's used my simple top down sock pattern, although most of the time he didn't read the pattern, he got me to tell him what to do next. <laughs> But that's okay, that's what I'm here for, to help him sort of learn to knit. And he's done really well, he even did the Kitchener stitch on the toe himself and they fit him really nicely. So I got him to cast on 64 stitches because he is a very, very tight knitter. He was knitting with um, 2.5 millimetre needles I think. But I'm really pleased with how they've come out and actually if you look on my Instagram page there's a picture of him clapping with his feet with the socks on which I thought was rather funny. <laughs> So that's the next finished thing I've got to show you and the third finished thing is actually some that Adam's mum's knitted as well. I have been knitting on my Cozy Memories blanket as well and I've got some crochet to show you in a bit but I just, um, I'm going to keep the Cozy Memories blanket till next week to show you because I haven't finished my row yet. So this is the Early Spring Bud Cowl by Olga Olach. I don't know if it's that so how you pronounce it but I will put the full name of the pattern and a link to the pattern in the description bar down below but isn't that cute it's got these buds on it's sort of reverse stockinette and then you see these buds which is coming from like a, a sort of a twisted rib edge and then the top has got the rib edge to match as well um, but isn't that pretty 
The yarn that I used was some Lay Family yarn that I had in my stash. But it's got some pretty speckles of all different colours in it and I thought that that would work well with the pattern. It actually used the entire skein. You just can, you can just keep knitting um, until you're sort of you've come close to the end of your yarn and then you cast off, which is absolutely brilliant. Uses up a whole skein of yarn, 100 gram skein, and um, you basically knit it as if you're knitting it inside out because you're you're working on the stockinette side, so it's you don't have to do all the purling, which is nice and easy. So like I said, Adam's mum knitted this for me as a little sample um, to show you how sort of what patterns you can use with a one skein. So let's try it on, shall we? I've literally just taken it off the blocking mats so you can see the line at the side because it was knitted in the round. It does feel like quite a wide cowl, but you could use less stitches if you wanted to or go down a needle size so that your tension was a bit tighter. But aren't those little buds cute? Yes, I'm liking this. I don't necessarily, I'm not one of those people that has to have a cowl really tight, so that would be nice to wear. Um, just to keep that chill off a little bit. So like I say, I have been working on a couple of other little projects, but I haven't done much of them. So rather than just show you the small amount of progress I've made, I'm gonna show you those next week. But I do have some crochet to show you now. So I found that I got a few of these squares already crocheted up when I was making my Battenberg blanket, um, which ended up being a cushion, which is this here. And I basically, I've got some left over, so I thought, oh, I think I'll just have a go at doing a few more and then I'll make something else with it. So I have done a few this week. I'll just show you a few of the, the, um, the yarns that I actually know what the yarns are. This is a Stranded Dye Works yarn um, in the Industrial Kingfisher colourway. I have a Eden Cottage yarn that I used for a hat a little while ago so they're great for using up scraps I think you only need about two grams to do these which is brilliant and this is a wool barn yarn I knitted a shawl with a little while ago so I do have quite a few squares now that I've just hooked on this um, stitch holder so that they're all nice and neat together it does drive me nuts that if you pop them all in the bag loose they just go into a huge mess so putting them on a little stitch marker like this is quite useful this is a clover um, stitch holder um, which is quite good because you have these two sort of rubber edges that sort of stop your stitches from escaping which is good so those are going to be something I did either think that I will do a wall hanging with these rather than a big blanket or a small blanket I'm not going to do a huge blanket with these tiny little squares because it will take forever <laughs> I am going to do um, undyed yarn between these squares like I did with this cushion here so I used Sandra's pattern, Sandra Paul from the Cherry Heart podcast, that's her Battenberg pattern um, and it's basically most supposed to be a, quite a big blanket but I don't really fancy doing hundreds and thousands of little squares so I'll just stick to sort of smaller projects for now although I might get really into it, who knows <laughs> so that's how many I've got so far and hopefully I'm going to start on the plain ones next week and, and then I'll hopefully decide exactly what I'm going to make out of them so now I have my sewing section. Now Barbara's going to have the week off again just because I've got two dresses to show you and it's just easier for me to wear the dress in front of the camera and talk about it instead of getting Barbara to wear it first. So I shall go off and put those dresses on and do a twirl in the lounge and tell you a little bit more about them. Right, so this is the first dress that I've made in the last couple of weeks. This is the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo Smock Dress. So I have made several top versions of this, but I thought it might be nice to have a sort of knee length, nice summery dress so that I can sort of get a nice and airy and on a nice summery day. So there's some nice pockets in this and this is the standard sort of knee length but I did use the sleeve from the add-on pack so you can have a ruffle on this bit as well with the indigo add-on pack but I just like the shorter sleeve I feel that it's it's nice and cool this way um, 
I was going to add the extra ruffle on the bottom which is also in the add-on pack but I did find that my fabric wasn't wide enough so do check that out if you do want to add the ruffle on the bottom. This is a double gauze that I picked up from Rainbow Fabrics and I just wanted to try double gauze and how it worked with the indigo top because I was a bit concerned that it might look absolutely massive but I think it's just about okay um, because obviously double gauze is quite, it's more thick and structured fabric than like a viscose. Um, I was going to add some ties just to give me a bit of waist definition but I thought actually when I held the panel up I thought actually I think that'll look alright. It'll just be nice and extra breezy for the summer. So I'll give you a twirl. I've just popped some leggings underneath this just I think it looks okay with three quarter length leggings as well. I do like my leggings underneath um, but I do like the the, the neckline on the indigo. I might have a go at hacking it to make a sort of v-neck as well and see how that goes. But I do like the shaping. Um, there's bust darts around the side and it just goes just under my bust. I did modify the pattern slightly when I did make my first versions. I did um, a smaller size on the shoulders compared to where the bust area is. Um, and then I stayed with the same size for the hips because it gives you lots of extra room anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with this one. So this second one is another short sleeve dress and this is another Tilly and the Buttons pattern and this is one of my very favourites, the Zady dress. Again, nice big pockets. These in fact are my favourite pockets in all the things I have. <laughs> the Zady dress normally comes in long sleeve and a very very short sleeve but what I did is I ended up cutting the longer sleeve piece to the length that I like it rather than it being super super short. I had made some modifications to the princess seams to give me more, more room for my bust and I also added some length on the centre back um, just to account for my big bum. <laughs> um, but I did take two inches overall off the bottom of the length because I wanted it to be about knee length and the the pattern is made for taller people I'm only five foot three so I did take the two inches off and that hits me just on the knee really I really love this fabric it's from Elza fabrics and it's like a watercolor print on a dark background which is always good slightly more flattering I think and you just can't beat massive pockets <laughs> I do have several of these now this is probably going to be my last Sadie dress for a while but I had got the fabric ready to use and I bought it for specifically making Sadie dresses so I've got those all made up now from the fabrics I have in my stash so really pleased with this one too So I've now got the Ask Me Anything section and that's the end of the podcast then but I do have quite a few questions and if you are interested in seeing some quilts which I shall show you in a second um, stay around for that. So the first question is from Colleen and she's from the All the Stitches with Colleen podcast um, and she was saying she does a lot of different crafts as well. And but I haven't shown any quilting lately on my podcast. I know I just haven't sort of been inspired to particularly do um, a particular quilt design, but we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> I've got two planned for this year. Um, Colleen's question was, am I working on any quilts? Um, at the moment, I haven't got anything sort of cut out or anything, but I do have a couple of ideas that I'd like to complete that are in my head floating around in my head there <laughs> um, but because I have got quite a few quilts already it, I don't feel desperate to make one because I just have a pile of quilts in the cupboard if you know what I mean I shall show you some in a minute Colleen's next bit of the question was how did I learn to quilt so I've been sewing for quite a few years I'd started doing dressmaking when I was about 15 so when I moved to Norwich I came across a lady that used to teach quilting it from her home so I did a few lessons with her and then she suggested that I join my local quilt group which I did and then I've been doing lots of classes um, that have been related to that and also I joined the Norfolk Quilters which is a larger group um, and they do lots of classes as well so I've been doing that ever since I think I started quilting in about 2009 I think properly um but i do enjoy it it's just that you only can get so many quilts in the house <laughs> um 
And the next part of Colleen's question is, what is my number one craft choice? Well, it does change whatever mood I'm in, really. But I would say that as a general rule, sewing is probably my favourite thing. I feel like at the moment, because I am enjoying making clothes that fit and make me feel nice, I'm enjoying doing that the most, I think. Um, but I just have different phases of whatever I'm interested in to be honest I do like to be involved in lots of different crafts so I can sort of distract myself and just enjoy different things rather than being focused on sort of finishing one project so I'm going to show you a few of my quilts that are in my wardrobe here that have been tucked away so I designed and made this quilt and it looks like a child's quilt but I didn't actually I just made it up and I thought oh we'll just see how it goes <laughs> So I've done a Dresden plate in the middle here with some um, and then with some different blocks around the outside. Um, it's going to be difficult for me to show you the whole thing but it's basically mirrored on the bottom of the quilt. Um, and that's all the blues and then I've just done some basic quilting um, along the blocks you can see um, to finish it across the back and I just appliqued some stars on so that's one of them. I'm only going to show you a few because there are a few more in the wardrobe. I've got some little squares that have been joined together and then I've done some free motion quilting which you can see slightly better on the back with some little flowery shapes. I do like to free motion quilt, I haven't done any in ages so I must get back to that. So that's a nice little bright sort of lap quilt. I have a nice simple white quilt here. Um, which I made with one of those jelly rolls by joining the strips and then cutting them up again and it's just um, flat panelled in the middle and then I've got a strip along the bottom and along and along the top and then I've put some white strips either side and it is backed in white as well and I've just some some vermicelli um, free motion stitching on the back there well on through it but you can see it on the back better so that's that one this is actually the very first quilt that I sort of made and I messed up the binding a bit but I do like the colors that I used and all the little blocks I used an app on my phone I think to design the um, placing of the the blocks and I do like the colors of this one they're quite nice and subdued which is rather nice. What I might do is take the binding off and reapply it because I didn't do a very good job on there. But there we go. That's a few of the quilts that I got. I did show a few of the quilts I got downstairs in one of my Vlogmas videos last year. So I will pop the link to that video in the description box down below so that you can find those other quilts as well because one of those especially was a huge quilt and there's no way I'm going to be able to hold it up here. <laughs> Oh dear, that's quite hard work lifting those quilts. I generally use an 80-20 mix of cotton and polyester wadding um, for quilts. And it gives like a nice weighty feel and I like the weight of it when you've sort of got it on top of here. But I've got quite a few of those. There's more in there covered here as well and there's a couple downstairs. So that's why I haven't made many lately. But I am planning on doing some sewing machine covers, which is a form of quilting um, in the next few months. So the next question is from Carol and Carol was saying that she uses opal sock yarn quite often and that they suggest not to use fabric conditioner on um, wool socks and why. Now I don't know exactly the scientific explanation for this but I know for a fact that when I've put, I've put fabric softener on socks just to see, just to try it out and it makes them crunchy which is really weird. I think that the fabric softener binds to the wool fibres and just coats it and it just doesn't feel very nice so you're better off not using softener. It does not soften the socks, it makes them crunchy which is really weird. You would not expect that to happen you can always try it just to see because you can always wash them out again because um, I did find that after I washed them again they were fine but obviously you'd need to rinse them quite a bit um, but it definitely makes them crunchy weird <laughs> so I've got a question from Dawn from the Dawn's Days podcast and Dawn was asking have I got any tips with helping with tangling when you're doing colour work because obviously you've got several balls of yarn and they sometimes get tangled 
So what I tend to do, Dawn, is that I tend to take my yarn out of the bag and I place the, the skeins um, of yarn on the floor sort of away from each other so that when I'm knitting, I, I can easily work out what direction they're supposed to be in. <laughs> so that when I'm sort of turning my work, I can try and detangle it as I go. But you're going to get tangles, whatever you do, I think. I think some people say that they use bags with dividers in so that you can have one ball in each side. But I find it just as you still have to sort of keep an eye on it. So I tend to just bung the balls of yarn on the floor as far apart as I can. And just at least then I can keep an eye on sort of where the yarn's going and how much it's tangled up close to me rather than having to sort of run after the yarn. <laughs> Hopefully that's helpful Dawn, probably not. The next question I've got is from Dobby Knitter and um, they were asking, they were asking about the cotton sock yarn that I was using for these socks that I finished that I showed you at the beginning of the podcast and they were saying because it's cotton and it's a stretchy cotton do you have to be mindful of tension. I actually found that the stretch and give in the cotton yarn is very similar to a superwash merino and nylon so it was uh, that was exactly what I'm used to knitting with for socks um, so I didn't find it any different at all. I like it to have the stretch because that means that you get a nice and neat fabric that's got a little bit of give on that has a sort of a retention of their of its shape rather than completely sort of loosening and losing its shape when it hasn't got that little bit of stretch if that makes sense. <laughs> So my last question is from Sam and Sam was asking what is Tensil? So Tensil is basically a brand name for Lyocell or Modal which is a type of rayon fabric and it's basically made from wood. So they take wood pulp from sort of sustainable forests and they dissolve the wood pulp and resuspend it so it makes it into fibres which is really interesting um, but apparently the whole process of creating tensile is quite environmentally friendly according to the website anyway but it is made from wood so it is a sort of a natural fiber I feel like similar to if, you, if you're wearing it as fabric for instance if you're wearing like a tensile modal or rayon type of fabric to to wear it feels it, it does feel like a more natural fabric it's a little bit more breathable than say sort of polyester materials as well and they do say that it's eth ethically sourced so um which is always good so with the Ravelry group, the Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group, I haven't always been replying in the actual thread. I'll just chat about what my answer is on the podcast. So if you do put a question there, do watch the next podcast so that you don't miss your answer. So I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I, see, I shall see you in the next podcast. Bye! <laughs>